want to say, I want to talk about today's parsha. <coughs> I want to say a real piece from the Sefer Dibre Yoel. Of course, Shomel uh, Mosif the Chazal say. I'm not just somebody that just says over. I think you're not allowed to be here. If you're not Shomel Mosif, I don't know if you're allowed to Darsh Barab in Kamosh Omer Lekut Barab. Imein Lecha Chidushi Masrli Drosh Ze Barab in. Oh, right, okay. That's what we talked to Sfi Cheshen yeah, about. And Rabbi Elston, we talked about. It's, it's, it's a sugi. Yeah. Okay. Go. Okay. It's not go into it, but I, I think if you uh, if you see something in a safer, you, you should think about it, and if you think about it, you'll naturally become a shomeo most. Mm -hmm. Now, so... I saw here a piece in the Sefer Dibre Yoel from Rabbeinu Yoel, the Satmar Rov. And it's interesting that in the beginning of every piece he has a list of caches. Over here, there's a cache that he doesn't mention in the beginning of the Torah, but he mentions it in the middle. And it's a horror that I never thought of. Parshat Shlach, the Baraglim, every year we go over and over again. It says, Moshe Rabbeinu said to the Meraglim, Vizchazaktem ulekachtem me prehorets. You should take from the prehorets. Now, when they came back, they brought Eshkonovi Mechod, Uminatene Minorimonim. And that was altogether ten, ten people. And Yeshua Vakolev didn't bring back anything. But the question is, there was a tzivoy of Moshe Rabbeinu, the kachtem mi priorit. How could they not be mekayim? I never thought of that hour. It's so poshit, and I never thought of it. And it's interesting that he doesn't even ask it in the beginning in his kashas, but Toche Dvorim asks the kash. How could they not listen to Moshe Rabbeinu? Oh, oh, oh. So he says like this. There's, there's a steer in the Zohar. Very interesting. The Zohar says in one place, the Meraglim took it in, in this passion. The Meraglim were trying to pick up the Eshkan Novin and it was too heavy. They couldn't pick it up. Yeshua Vukolev came and they picked it up. They had the kochas to pick up the Eshkan Novin. Once they picked it up, so the other ten carried it. That's one Zohar. Another Zohar in a different place in Parsha Shoftim. Not in this Parsha. The Zohar says the posseg, on the Posig, Vayisau Bamot Bishnoim, they carried the Eshkan Novin in, in a stick. And Bishnaim and there were two people. Who are the two people? Who are the two? Who's the Shnaim? Says the Zohar, the Samach Mem, Ubaz Zugei, that's the Shnaim. When you say Samach Mem, you have to know it means the Malcha Moves, the Sotan. Ten forty five. We call him Samach Mem because his name is Samach Mem Aleph Lamed. The Arizal says you shouldn't say names of Malachim that are not mentioned in Psukim. I think also you should say Samach and Mem and Lamed and Oh, okay. I think that's how they, yeah. So, so we shouldn't say we shouldn't say the name, and uh, because he, because if it's in Psukim, it's all right. But if you if it's not in the Psukim, you say his name, he might come. Uh, so we don't say his name. We just say this Samach Mem. Ubas Zuge and his nowadays they partner his partner nowadays it's a, it's a known concept his partner yeah uh, his partner her name is Lamed Yud Lamed Tov which it sounds like the word Lila with a Tov in the end Yalala and it means Yalala crying there's Gematria uh, Talmud what Gematria Talmud. Oh, and uh, she's the like the female Sotan. There's the male Sotan and the female Sotan, and those are the Shnaim that carried the Ashkan. It wasn't.
wasn't, it wasn't in, uh, what's, what's the pshat? In, in one place the Zohar says Yeshua and Kalev picked it up. And the other place says the Samach Mem and his Bazuk picked it up. Says Rabbi no, says Rabbi no, says like the pshat is like this. That the uh, MS, there's an, another thing, there's a Medrash, interesting. Medrash goes even further. Medrash says that they didn't even want to bring the fruits of the land. They, they was too heavy or other reasons. So Kalev ben Yufuna came and he drew his sword and he ran in front of them and he said, if you don't take the fruit, I'm going to kill you or something. Imams and they were afraid of him. I don't know why, but they were afraid of him. He came with a tkifus. You have to take me, Priyarat. This was a tzivu of Moshe Rabbeinu. And they listened to him, and they took me, Priyarat. Says Rabbeinu, you are like this. The sad moro. Says like this. The MS is that Yeshua and Kalev, they wanted to be Mekayim, the words of Moshe Rabbeinu. And they take help to pick it up, because they were ready to do the mitzvahs Hanovi. In fact, it's not a mitzvah, because Hanovi, especially Moshe Rabbeinu, tells you to do something, it's a mitzvah to do it. And that's what the Zohar says, that Yeshua and Kalev were the ones that picked it up. But he says after they picked it up and they put it on the shoulders of everybody, so the Miraglim, the other ten, they started thinking of Machshove. Ah, we didn't want to take this Eshkan over. Yeah, Kale forced us. Okay, so we'll take the Eshkan over him and we'll use it for the opposite, Lotsi Diba Lord. They didn't think of that idea in the beginning. They said, it's too heavy, it's too heavy, let's just leave it here. So we won't do everything that Moshe Rabbeinu said. We won't do exactly what he said. But once they had it on their shoulders, and their whole kavana was loud, see, Diba, so they got this idea in their heads that let's, let's uh, use it, and we'll say, when we bring it back, Kishem Shapiria Meshune, I'm a Meshune, the Paris is strange, the people there are strange. We can't conquer them. Lo nucha, lo nucha. That's the main eager problem of the Miraglim is the lo nucha. We can't, we can't. So many of us says that the two czars, they're, they're marshalling one another. It's not a cash, it's not a steer. Pshat is like this. In the beginning, it was Taka Yeshua of the were the ones that picked it up. Because they wanted to be Mekayim the Mitzvah that Moshe Rabbeinu told them, Vishchazak the Mulekach the Mibri Oret. But once they picked it up and they got this Ben Machshav in their head, and we're going to use these, this Eshkan Novim to talk Lush and Har on Eretz Yisrael, to say, Kishem Shapir Meshun HaKach, Rama Meshun, and once they had that Machshav, then, then the Samach Mem of Bazuge, they, they got in and they gave them the kochus to pick it up and carry it. The Shobah Kalev said, we're, we're getting out of this. We, we don't want to have anything to do with this. And of course, uh, obviously we know that these people are big people. They, they didn't have a gash mystical look like we do. They, they saw, they saw Ruchnitz. Ruchnitz was Mamash a reality by them. They saw that the Samach Mem and his Bazuk got involved over here and they were helping to carry it and they said, we're staying away. So, man, that's the other, the second Zohar, the Vaisu Bamog Bishnam, that's the Samach Mem of Bazuk. So, according to that, so we understand now the two Zohars. And the cash and the hour that we asked in the beginning is also answered. We asked in the beginning, Yeshua Vikala, they had a mitzvah. There was a mitzvah of Moshe Rabbeinu, Bishchazak, and Lekach, and Mepriyorat. So why, 
What kind of thing is this not to be Mekayim, the midst of the Novi, to, be, to bring me prayer? The Teretz says, says the Sadmer of Rabbeinu Yoel, if the Rishoyim get involved, the Samach Memu and his Shluchim in this world of Meraglin get involved, even if it's with mitzvahs, and even if it's a TV of Moshe Rabbeinu, you stay away. Sheval Tase, don't do it. And Memele Yeshua Vikolev said, yeah, it's a bit sad, but once, once they're involved, once that side is involved, we're staying out of it. We're not being involved. Now, the same thing is nowadays, says Rabbi Yoel. We, we, in, the, in the last generation, the last hundred years, there became a movement that's called Zionism. And they talked about Yishu Eretz Yisrael and Eretz Yisrael and the Hashivas of Eretz Yisrael and everything. Of course it's a mitzvah of Eretz Yisrael. The Gemara has two daf Gemara in the end of Ksuvah talks about the Milas of Eretz Yisrael. How could, how could you not go after that movement? They're talking about the greatness of Eretz Yisrael, but no. Once the Rishoyim catch on to something, stay away, don't get involved, don't have anything to do with it. And that was Yeshua because that's what we have to know nowadays also. Eretz Yisrael is a big thing. But the Rish, once the Rishayim use it, we don't have anything to do with it. I wanted to be a Shomeo Moshe that I saw in the Sefer Sod Yisharim on Purim. And he talks about the, this Mamish, the same Indian of the, the Samach Mem and the Bas Zuge, that in, in the Sitra Achra and the Satan, there's two parts, it's like two parts to the two leaders of the Sitra Achra, of the other side. It's how the two, the, the male and the female. So he says, it sounds like this, the male, that's the kifus, the gaive. Uh, every aver a person does, there's a certain element of gaive involved. The is, I can do it. I'm not going to be affected. It's not going to bother me. It's not going to hurt me. Well, let's say nowadays in the Ikvus of the Mashiach, there it happens in the Rachmanel Islam, we see there happens Bachran, that they take off their yarmulke. We see it happen in front of our eyes, Rachmanel Islam. When I was young, such a thing, you couldn't dream. You couldn't dream of to take off your keeper. How can you do such a thing? You're going to stay alive. You're going to survive if you do that. It can't be the Tamimas. I was still Zohar to see a door. <laughs> and with, with the door that I grew up in is also the, the, the lowest of the lowest, but still there was still a certain element of Tamimas. How could you do such a thing, naked your father and your mother? Now there's me, you see it, it's Shriach, it happened. You see, Bachem, they take off the keeper from there. That's Gaive. You, I can do it. Nothing will happen to me. It won't affect me. That's the male of the Sitra The female is enjoying it, having pleasure, and sitting back and being mismogig. And how do you say it? Mismogig to, to sit there and, and put the mud and smear the mud all over you and say, oh, I feel good, it's such a pleasure. Sitting in the, sitting in the mud is so comfortable, it's so nice. You know, that's how a woman, that's feminism. Oh, it's so nice, it's so wonderful, the beautiful tree, the beautiful painting, the beautiful other things. That's feminism. The enjoyment of that very, it seems there must be some stupid I know in going around without a yarmulke, with with torn torn pants. Now there's such a stoose now. Now we're doing the Baltic feeling now. Um, we'll, we'll finish now and we'll continue in a few seconds. Thank you.